Hello again, this is Nonsanity with another Let's Play Unleashed. And uh, I have solved the problem of killing ghasts in here. <laughs> yeah, I had put them in here and they're not moved by the conveyor belts. I don't know what he's doing. Well, he's dying. But uh, yeah, you can see what's going on up here. And if you oops, if you know uh, the portal mod, you may recognize the uh, high energy pellet launchers. I've got six of them here, one above. They need to have a block behind them. And uh, this is a bit of red net cable here, controlled by a computer that every 22 seconds it fires them all off. That gives them time to uh, despawn on their own and gives a few seconds for uh, guests to uh, spawn in the room. They won't spawn if the, when they try, if the pe pellets are in the way, they uh, will fail to spawn. When all the pellets are at one end, they may still spawn. So they may spawn while the pellets are in the air, but uh, that little gap just to help make sure they spawn. And yeah, these, this is working pretty well. I think these are a little bit OP. Uh, all they take is red net signal and uh, they're lethal. Probably should, if it detects uh, IC2 or Buildcraft, should require power, I would say, just to make them more balanced. But then the portal mod really wasn't meant to be mixed with other mods. It was just supposed to give Minecraft the portal experience. But uh, for what it is, it's fun. You can see one of them right there. <laughs> uh, Fuss road da, dude. You died. <clears throat> And it's, it's been really working pretty well. I've had it running for, I don't know, I was having dinner, so it's uh, been an hour or two. Got plenty of tears. <laughs> Lots of gunpowder. Thankfully, they don't drop spoils bags, because when I had spiders running, uh, which gave me uh, 6,500 string and 2,000 spider eyes, I got uh, way too many spoils bags, so I'm going to have to uh, sort through all those. But it's a good source of the Oblivion frames. You're hiding over here. You're almost within range of the turtles, I think. But you're also within range of the... Haha, <laughs> killers. So that's working. And because their drops can land on top of that thing, I put another conveyor belt on top just to sweep the drops off. So yeah, this is working pretty well. I'm, I'm really digging my mob spawning room. I'm going to be moving my base soon to my final location. And uh, I'll have to recreate all this, but that'll be fine. I can dress it up, make it a little bit cooler looking, not just cobbles, uh, not just stone walls, but uh, do something interesting. Now that I've got the basic design down, so I'll leave that running for a little bit longer. There's no, I don't really have to put in deep storage for these. It's, it's going to take a couple hours. I'll probably turn it off before I go to bed, but uh, by that time I'll have more than enough tears to last for whatever I want to do. <laughs> All right, what else has been going on? Oh, yes, if you see up in the top left corner, energy level 80, I got gravity chest plate. I love my gravity chest plate, and it needs a charge. I've been flying around a little bit with it. It gives you all the benefits of a uh, quantum chest plate, but uh, it also lets you fly. Uh, it uses up power like crazy. And it also recharges your tools, so I don't have to keep stopping and recharging it from my glove as I used to. Now it'll just drain it from my backpack, or from yeah. There's a there's basically a lap, an advanced lap pack, built into the gravity chest plate. It's a very expensive recipe. I mean, look at this sucker. These superconductors, each one of them takes a whole bunch of the uh, the superconductor covers, and those take iridium, multiple iridium. You only get three for that. Oh, it's very, very expensive. And uh, <clears throat> then you have these two things, the Graviton engines, which have these cooling, more and more superconductors, and these cooling cores, which have you know the more and more iridium everywhere. Well, not in that one. There was more iridium in here. Oh, in the center, it's more iridium. And then the copper. Tons and tons of copper. Copper... Uh, heat capacity reactor plating and that takes these copper which is each one of these is eight copper and there's 
you know, just layers and layers and layers of them. You got two of these, and those take two, and each of that takes another one. And then the these things take more of them, and they're, you know, just ten and oh. I was sitting at my uh, crafting terminal for about an hour, putting all the pieces together. But I finally had my gravity chest plate. Very, very happy. And all my stuff got moved around. Sometimes sorting when you have some dialogue up just messes up your inventory. So uh, I've also been working on the bees a little tiny bit. I haven't been breeding anymore. I'm still just stuck with the Imperials. But I've been working on my uh, serums. Like uh, This is a good one. Both to temperature tolerance. So it's two up and two down. That lets me... Uh, I did use it to uh, modify a modest queen and a modest drone so that they can operate here in a uh, t more temperate in, um, biome. Otherwise, they only work in the desert. So I got them working here using that uh, using this uh, serum. And I'm just filling it up and charging it back up. Though I think uh, I may have done something with the power wrong. Let me check this. So the power comes out of that one. It's full up. It goes into this one and this one. They're full up. Ah, and it doesn't come out there. All right, that's the problem. All right, I need to move this without losing its power. I think my... Uh, yeah, there it is. Omni wrench. See, I guess I'll clear out a little bit more here. Whoops. And put it here. And I need one more um, conductor. There we go. And then make that an output. There. We are. So that should be going down. Well, I guess it's pulling from over here now. So this should be going down. Yeah, okay. Fill that in. So basically, this one has the feed coming from... I can't get over there right now. Coming from those buildcraft pipes that I originally had, which I can probably replace at some point here. So it's going into there. That's coming from the solars and going into the power converters and going into that cell. And then from that cell, the energy gets split into these two cells. Now this one will is devoted only to the AE system. That should solve the problems of it running out of power. It'll keep drawing from this one, the main one, where, where fresh power is coming in, but it's got this when it needs it. And obviously it's this one's going to fill as fast as it's drained because uh, it's going to be filled from this line, as long as that's got power. So this one, if we completely run out of power, the AE system will run on a completely full cell for as long as possible. And it also sends half its power over to this guy, which when the machines aren't running will store up a good charge. But when I start using them, they'll have plenty of power to draw on. And in fact, I can probably turn this way up to 100. They'll only take what they need, but uh, they can take a lot of power. Oops. So I was taking that out, and I shouldn't have, because it's, it's already excellent quality. It, just, it was waiting for power so it can uh, synthesize. All right, there it goes. Yeah, these things really, really pull the power. I mean, you can see it's draining its own internal buffer, which means it's also pulling from that cell, which we won't see changing. Oh, we do. Well, yeah, because it's pulling it out twice as fast as it flows in from over here. Uh, even more than twice. I can go up to 50 at least. <clears throat> so that's pulling it out at double speed. <clears throat> oh, there's Colossus. He's got... He, I mentioned in one of my other uh, video comments that uh, he's got his own uh, Let's Play on the server here. Uh, I'll, I'll link it again in this, in this video's comments since I see him logging on this time. So, all right, so this should be fine now for powering everything safely. 
And that's filling up nicely. Good, because I'm going to use that a lot. That's one of the four. What was that? Where's the explosions coming from? These guys? No? So he isn't dying. They're going right through him. He must be like right in between them or something. But no, that's not who's exploding. I'm not sure what that was. It's not like I've got a lot of automation with things flowing through pipes. I know buildcraft pipes, if you get too much stuff going through them, uh, they'll start to explode. Or am I thinking, no, they'll, they'll just, yeah, they'll blow out. And But the logistics pipes will also make that same explosion sound when they get too much stuff in them. As they don't destroy the pipe, but they destroy all the items flowing through them if there's too many. But I don't have any logistics pipes. Oh, this is almost full. And when it is full, you take it out because it's good quality now, and it'll be still good quality. That's good. And it just has to go up a little little bit over here in the purifier. But as I was saying, I, there's four main um, serums I want to use. The both two, high fertility, high production, and what's the other one? Oh, both two, humidity tolerance. If I start with... Um, Hive bees, uh, uh, cave, uh, rocky bees, rocky bees, the ones you find in caves. The hives you find in caves, rocky bees. If you start with those and then use a uh, species serum, once you've, iso once you've bred uh, a species, even if it's a half-breed, you can sequence it and get the uh, species serum. And then from a quarry, you're going to have a lot of rocky uh, princesses and drones. So you take some of the rocky princesses and drones, give them the uh, correct species, and then treat them with the two temperature, two humidity, high production, high fertility, and then you have a perfect bee. And they work underground, at night, in rain, and, uh, and work fast and hard and have lots of kids. And Oh yeah, they're wonderful. Don't really need the high, high fertility, I found, because... I was getting way too many bees after a while. It was good at first, but so I can probably skip that one. And high productivity takes a lot of thomcraft of uh, research to get to, because so you have to have to breed that sort of to the bee. There was one breed that has the high uh, productivity, highest productivity, and it has to be bred over certain thomcraft gems. And I don't really want to do all of thomcraft again. It's not, once you've done it once, it's not very exciting to do it again. <laughs> and I've done it twice at least. So I'm not planning on doing it again. But uh, maybe somebody else will and I'll bum some crystals off them eventually. To get my productivity up to the highest bit. Yeah, I was making my uh, high energy pellet launchers. I think these are the cheaper recipes. And I've got another drive down there, and I may have mentioned that, I'm not sure. But it's a... One of them is a 16, the other all 4K. I'm going to need another drive before long. I also will probably switch out a lot of the things I have, many of, to these deep storage units. It's not just cobble, but like smooth stone, which I have even more of. And dirt, and sand, and... I, I, I found a lot of abyssal stone underground. Pretty cool place. Even now, well, what was it called? What was diamond? Yeah, dark diamond ore. Dark, dark emerald ore and dark diamond ore. I got two of each. Oh, and two dark lap lapis lazuli. I tried putting them in the various machines, and I couldn't grind them. I couldn't bake them. I'm not sure what you do with them. Actually, you probably just ask it. So what do I do with this? As it stops and thinks about it. There we go. 
Oh, that's right. I tried that, and it just says it's equivalent, but it doesn't seem to be equivalent. So I'll probably just use them for decoration. <clears throat> They're neat looking. Maybe if I didn't pick them up with silk touch, they would drop what they're supposed to drop. <laughs> That's probably the way it's supposed to work. But uh, because my drill here has uh, the uh, uh, silk touch, core of silk touch in it, I picked up the block. So Anyway, it'll look good for decoration. So I'm happy with the new gassed spawning system. I think that's working pretty well. And I'm going to have to turn it off soon as this chest starts to fill up. But it can go on for another hour or two, and then I'll stop it. I don't know what else I'll put in there. Maybe I don't need pigs. I don't, I've got plenty of lamb chops, and let's see, i got yeah, 8,000 raw lamb chops and 5,000 raw beef. I should cook all that up and have a big barbecue. But before you have a barbecue, you need some honey. And I've actually been spending the last mm, day and a half since a moment ago uh, working on bees. Because I need a lot more solar panels, and those take a lot of uranium. And I just don't have much uranium. I got four. I need twice that just to add one more hybrid solar panel. Actually, I think I need nine. So, uh, I was going to make radioactive bees. Now, uh, radioactive bees are not simple to make. As you can see here, this is a chart of how to breed radioactive bees. Uh, if you want to see this chart and similar charts for all the other things you can breed in this mod pack, uh, just go to nonsanity.com slash bees. Uh, I'll put the link in the uh, description but it's easy enough to remember. Uh, I've got all the charts there. I, I won't guarantee that it's 100% correct. I've only you know, followed a few of them myself, but I cobbled it together from other sources, and it seems correct. And this is the radioactive bee chart. <laughs> I am almost done. Okay, so right now I've got one nuclear drone and a forest princess that's not on the chart forest you don't breed these do you breed it to a glittering well uh i think yep glittering species serum is ready so i'm going to pop these in there and uh this is going it's got 12 charges and it's excellent quality always use excellent quality and 12 is more than enough four would be enough two could be enough you see even well this is genome unknown i've never sequence this one. This is straight from a hive, so I didn't really have to sequence it, but uh, you have both single uh, breed bees. Let's see, like, uh, let's find one here that's single. Well, all these over here. These are my hive bees, the meadows. It's just meadows. Whereas if you go over here and look at some of these, this is like a corroded, resilient hybrid. Every bee has two uh, of everything, two of every gene. And if they're the same, like that meadows or forest, then it's just forest or meadows. But if it has two different ones, then it lists them here. When you're using the inoculator, it's going to put this serum into one of the two possible slots. So this will become a, after that, when this is done here, this will become a glittering forest or a forest glittering. Don't know which one of the two it's going to put it into. If it turns golden, then it went into probably went into the first slot. Now the next time they both have to be gl golden for me to uh, or glittering, excuse me, glittering for me to use this bee pr well to use it properly. I'd, I'd rather them both be the same. It improves my chances. So the second time it's going to run. Okay, so it's a forest glittering, because it still looks like a forest. So now the glittering is in the second slot, and it's going to do another injection, but it's random every time, so it might put it in the second slot again, in which case it's not going to change at all. This could go on several times, so you may need more than just two charges, but if it puts it in the first slot the second time, you're done with two charges. So I usually put about twice as much as I know it needs. Like if 
this one, this guy was originally already half nuclear because I bred him up and he was a mixture of nuclear and something else. I forget what the other option was. But uh, I just needed to put the uh, nuclear into his other genome, allele. Uh, but I still put two onto the serum. <laughs> now, once I have got unlimited bees to uh, grind in my gene pool here, uh, I can fill them all the way up but uh, I'm still running low, especially in the uh, purifier, it keeps running low. I actually put a uh, oblivion frame in with my imperial bees. They're not producing any product, but I'm sure getting lots of extra bees very, very quickly. Every 30 seconds, I'm getting a few extra bees to melt down. So that helps restock. And I've got plenty of these uh, oblivion frames from the spoils bags from my mob farm. So I think I had uh, like 90 of them. So I'm good for a while. I'll never use that many. Not if I do a whole lot of breeding. But as soon as this... I mean, this may pop down here as a glittering drone. But, yes! Oh, lucky, lucky. There we go. Did it in two. And there's our breeding pair. Excellent. I wanted to show you these final steps just to show you how I go about doing it. I've got over here a uh, not non-automated uh, apiary with an oblivion frame and now I'm going to pop these two in there and make sure that they're happy oh I did uh, take the uh, bite out of the nuclear <laughs> oh, oh it's raining a oh, nice hat um, in favor of the uh, podcast here I'm going to clear the weather again I couldn't hear it because I've got it muted in my config I highly recommend that for everyone. Find it in your config. <laughs> I forget where it is, unfortunately, or I'll tell you. But, uh, alright, there they go. I could have... If, if I was playing without the recording, I probably would have pulled this Glittering Queen out. And uh, I've got a uh, Rainfall Serum. So I could have given that to the Queen. You can do it to the Queens, but it won't breed true because there's other alleles in there that you're not affecting and can't affect. All right, we're done. So we've got a... Everybody looks glittering, but let's see what they actually are. We've got a glittering nuclear. So that's the perfect combination of what we had. Another glittering nuclear. That's fine, too. Another glittering nuclear. And another glittering nuclear. So I can put any, any one of those drones in, and we'll go with another round. And I will save this first pair in here in my hybrid's chest. If I have to do this many times, I'm just going to be straight sending them to the, be liquefied. Because I don't need tons of the same hybrid bees. This only takes, with the Oblivion frame in there, it only takes 30 seconds. Uh, it doesn't guarantee that the, the mutation will happen. There's only a, like a 5 or less ch percent chance, I think, for this particular breeding pair. So I might have to do it up to 20 times on, on average. So we got can never go by what they look like because oh but this one actually is pure nuclear and glittering nuclear all right now that i am going to try and improve my chances by sticking this half glittering back in make it full glittering to match the full nuclear otherwise because it's half nuclear you could get the nuclear from this one and a nuclear from this one guaranteed on that in that case and end up with more pure nuclear children but by making it 100% uh, golden, uh, glittering, I keep saying golden because the glittering drone makes gold. Uh, yeah, but by making it pure glittering and pure nuclear, they can't help but have glittering nuclear children. That's the only possibility. And one of those might trigger the mutation. So it's worth a few moments to... Uh, repopulate the uh, allele with glittering in this case. Now uh, over here I've got some industrious because I want to move up to uh, alvearies and the alvearies take a lot of pollen like I think one alveary takes like three and a half stacks of pollen if I did my math right. Uh, the alveary blocks take eight of these scented panels and the scented panels It'll show me the recipe. To get one, you need one pollen. So for every block 
of the aviary, you need eight pollen. And it's a three by three structure. So it adds up to quite a lot of pollen. So they got them going here. Oh, I could put uh, some more uh, nice frames in there. It looks like they've run out. This in increases their production. And there is a recipe to make these using dart craft. So this will be my, this is my breeding one. All right, then we have the industrial. We have the uh, imperials. They they make the uh, the uh, royal jelly and also the dripping combs, which give you a lot of honey, which I've needed to uh, power my, oh, I'm almost out of honey drops in my beelizer. And then over here, I still have the uh, diligence because that gives you uh, the stringy combs, which have propolis. So uh, those three have been doing pretty good to get me those three main bee products. And our glittering is done and ready to be once more bred together. So these are both pure bred. Well, not, they're, they're pure breed. They're not pure bred, I don't think. I haven't been... Since they're not the production line, they're not pure bred, which means every pairing of alleles is the same. Uh, these guys, they are. And one way you can tell that, even before you get a bealizer, if you, you don't have the honey yet, and you're just starting out, if you keep breeding, if you've bred like a forest and a meadows to make it common, and you just start breeding the common against itself, you end up with lots of different slots over here filled with common bees. If you just keep doing that until all the drones stack, so you have the queen and all the drones are stacking, that is pretty sure that you've got a pure bread bee and no further, further mutations will happen to it, just breeding it to itself. It means everything's the same. There's no variation. All right, what we got here? So 30 seconds later, we pop them in. That's a mix. That's a mix. And this has got to be a mix too, unless it mutated and it did not mutate. So again, we'll pop, put these back in. It's a mix and a mix. So I could get pure glittering. I could get pure nuclear. I could get more mixes. It's 50% chance of mixes, 25% chance for each of the other two to be pure species. And this extra one, I'm just going to melt down. So in 30 seconds, I'll come back there. So whenever I was, whenever I received a new uh, bee species, when the mutation happened, it usually is only a half mutation. Only one of the two alleles in one drone gets the, the difference. So I'd immediately pop it over here into the isolator. Um, there's a chance of losing it, but uh, I can keep breeding if I need to. I only do the drones, never do the princess in here. If it's the, if only the princess has the new, keep trying to breed it. Get a, get a drone so you can lose it if you need to. Pop it over here and try and isolate the species. All these in this bottom row are species. I think I only have one of each of these. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of them. And these are some of the better... Um, I think these are all duplicates up here, or just ones I'm not sure I want. But like, both two humidity tolerance. Not Bees that can operate at night. Uh, high fertility, so they have lots of uh, drones. Both two temperatures... Both two means it goes both up and down in temperature tolerance, so it can stand hotter or colder biomes. Ability to operate in the rain, ability to operate without a clear direct line of sight to the sky. The effect cancellation serum, which is what I did to the uh, nuclear and I will be doing to the radioactive once I get it, which it doesn't seem like I did, but it may be hiding in here. Glittering a nuclear, pure nuclear, and we're not going to use that one. Glittering nuclear, that's probably the best bet. And glittering and nuclear. So use these two. And what happened to that bee? Oh, it dropped. There it is. And I'll just melt. I'll keep the nuclear that's pure and stick it in here. I keep some of the pure species in there just as a backup in case something happens. And that one, that oblivion frame still has plenty of life on it, more than half. So yeah, this has been taking me you know, the last two evenings, and I was expecting to ha have to keep doing it over here the weekend, because it, it's Friday right now, Friday night. But, uh, yeah, I'm sort of barreled on through and uh, using the serums carefully to uh, improve my chances. I've gotten 
all the way here to the end. But you can see it takes a while. All right, we have a mix and another mix. Those two are good. Oh, and I'm out of honey. Let me grab some more from my AE system. All right. Toss the honey in. Where was I? This one. That's pure glittering. I'll save that one. And pure nuclear. I don't need to keep that one around because I already saved one. So there's the glittering. And we'll melt this one. And we'll put these two. I should have done that in the other order just in case I accidentally melted these. But if I did, because the first thing I always try and do is save the serum. If you've saved the serum, you can revive the line later on. So these species serums are invaluable. Now, I found that one of the best ways to revive a species or to start a fresh copy is to use, um, not tolerant, not resilient. I guess I don't have one over here. Do I have one over here? I think I've used them all up. I haven't done a lot of quarrying. Rocky drones and princesses. The Rockies are great because they start out with, um, is this a Rocky? This is. All right. Let's take a look at the Rocky here. Thought I saw one. All right. Uh, they're not too exp uh, nice there, but oh, this is not a natural Rocky. This is one that's been through some breeding. But a real natural Rocky will have all these set to yes. They work at night because they're underground. I mean, the, the they work during the day, yes. They work during the night, yes, because they live underground. They they fly in the rain, they're underground, they don't care if it's raining. And cave, yeah, they definitely work in the cave. So all these are yes. So you don't have to, these are great to have, and so you don't have to set them. They're not so great up here. I think they just have one up, one down in these. So I like bumping them up to two up, two down. And I also like increasing their fertility up to three. I think there may be a four, but you know, three is pretty good. That way I've got plenty of bees to grind for DNA. And if I have extra bees, I can just trash them. Uh, always make sure the effects are none, unless it's a beneficial effect. In fact, one of the serums I've got in there is one that, yeah, regeneration. This is being given to me by the Imperial bees, I do believe. All right, what we got this time? Pull them out, take a look. You can see why I didn't do all this on camera. This just takes so long. And it's a lot of the same thing over and over again. In fact, that was very similar to the last one. Especially as you get closer to the end of a line where it gets a smaller chance to have a mutation. I kept the unstable effect serum. I haven't filled it up. I might not. That's what the... Uh, radioactive line of bees the unstable nuclear and radioactive all do it's pretty nasty it's like two hearts per second or something and it goes right through the armor that i'm wearing uh if, if you wore a beekeeper's uniform i think that would uh, pr protect you but uh that's not enough general protection for me i like having my quantum so i just get out of the way or better yet declaw the bees. So these were all mixes and a pure glittering. I'll keep sending the mixes in there and eventually I'll get a hit. Now if you know your uh, genetics, simple crossbreeding like this, like I said, if I'm mixing two half-breeds, it's only a 50% chance that one of the bees will have both species and I think a bee that is potentially both species like that are the only ones that will actually spontaneously mutate. A purebred bee that, that is a children of this pairing I don't think it has any chance to mutate. So having pure glittering like this and pure nuclear which I'm not going to have I hope I still have nuclear here these are all pure wow it's only half nuclear so I'm going to have to uh, take out the glittering here and make this sucker back to being nuclear because it's only got one charge. I'm going to have to fill it back up again. I'll do that off camera if I have to. Because if I put, them, put this pure glittering queen in with this half glittering, half nuclear, uh, <laughs> 
there's only there's only a 25 percent chance that i'll retain the nuclear it'd be lost completely so i might as well uh bump this up to full nuclear and that'll give me you know 100 percent base chance to get the mutation the mutation's probability still factors in which is very low but it'll, it pure against pure is the best chance to get the mutation pure uh perfect hybrid against perfect hybrid is probably the next best but it's only half as good but you get that a lot so it's instead of stopping and doing this to both bees it's easier just to keep going do a couple generations but when it gets down to like this when there's only a 25 percent chance of retaining the nuclear even yeah i like stopping and uh using the serums and hopefully this serum will make it in the right slot otherwise we'll have to refill it so we'll see if it puts it into the second slot it'll just be a glittering nuclear again and that won't help me at all almost there i still have that spider on the roof he's not going away is he same hat too oh i thought it was a creeper it's one of those little character hats i don't care for those much Maybe if I knew who the people were, it might make a difference. Oh, not there. Here. Oh, we got it. All right. I lucked out. And now it's empty, so I'm just going to toss it in here to get refilled. Because I may need it again, the way my luck's going. But still, you saw the chart. I've done this many, many times. Now it's raining again. That's... Oops. Yeah, like I said, if, if you take a queen out and you stick it in the inoculator and do something like give it the uh, rainfall it'll work when you put it back in the hive but probably all the uh, children it has will not retain the uh, rainfall allele oh now it's night and this bee is not see it's just one person on I don't think oh yeah it's Colossus I don't think he'll mind uh, time set day Come on, this is a video. I'm doing this for you guys here. I don't want you to have to wait. And I'd rather not have to cut. <laughs> oh, skeleton outside. Dying somewhere. Wait for the bees to stop flowing. If you note, the color of the bees matches the color of the outline of the bee. And I'm starting to freeze up. I may have to cut here anyway just to do a relog. Oh, they're done. Go a little bit farther here and see what we got. Ah! <gasps> radioactive! The queen is half radioactive. Excellent. And this one is the old. And this is the old. And this is the old. Oh no! Now I said, if it's the queen, don't put it in the isolator because there's a chance you'll lose it. But this one, I want to try. If it's horrible and it gets killed off, all I have to do is make uh, take one of these other bees I've got here, stick it in there with probably nuclear, and then take one of these drones and make it full glittering, or just take my the one full glittering I've got in here, and uh, I can be back on the ball right quickly. But uh, I want to see if I can isolate the radioactive. Once you do, I can then put this bee in with that serum and make it fully radioactive. And then take any drone and do the same to it. And then start going through all my serums, you know, getting the uh, effect cancellation because otherwise it's going to be hurting. Uh, make sure it's got the cave, uh, rainfall, works at night, up its humidity tolerance, its temperature tolerance, make it high fertility. I don't have a high productivity yet. Best I've got is slower productivity, but it's better than slowest. And I'm not sure what uh, this guy is going to... Oh, there it is. Radioactive. I got it. Take it out. Yes. That was a bit lucky on my part. There have been times where I've gone through 40 or 50 serums before I get the one. I get it on the third one. Uh, you guys are lucky. Oh, wait. I can't put it in there yet, of course. i jumping ahead of myself. I've got to fill it up. And I just took that out when it was almost full. I wasted some power, but that's okay. All right, so I will let that one purify. Get this one 
with a few, uh, I need at least six. I need at least three, and I probably should have six charges. So I will charge this up, purify it, and then prep my bees for the final, and I will be back to show you the final breeding pair. So be right back. Welcome back. Okay. I ran down to the mines, into the caves, and I found two rocky hives. This is one of the princesses and drones from that rocky hive. I have made them radioactive with a radioactive serum. I've given them two up, two down temperature tolerance and two up, two down humidity tolerance. And I'm giving them the slower productivity, which isn't great, but it's better than their slowest. So this one is now done. That one's going to get, hopefully, its final injection. Let's take a look at this one here. So short lifespan, that's fine. Slower speed, that's better than slowest. Slowest pollination, don't care about that. Uh, flowers, rocks. That was natural for the rocky drone, and that's fine, because that way I don't have to have flowers or cactuses or lily pads or anything around it. Just rocks. Any stone or anything. Fertility. I'd like to up the fertility. Maybe I might do that later, just so I can get excess bees out of it. But I don't need it for the uranium. Uh, area 6 by 6 by 9 Again, that's part of the pollination. It doesn't matter. Effect is none. That's the way it comes as a rocky. Go here. It's now two up, two down for everything. And as by default, a rocky has yes for all of these. These are of natural origin, but heavily modified. Zero generations in captivity. The brand new bees. And this one's coming up right on the end. I've gone ahead and added uh, the automation tubing to this one over here. Uh, put an iron pipe there so that everything will flow towards the chest. Of course, the uh, plugs. Very important. Keep them from attaching and getting all complicated. So he's in the last little bit. In a moment here, I will have my redirective bees. Yes. There they are. All the uranium I'll ever want. Oh, no, don't need an oblivion frame. Let's give them a proper frame. I've got one proven frame. Let me make some more here. So we want a proven frame. Oops. That's this. But first I need the impregnated frame. I made a bunch of the impregnated sticks. So I should be able to make a bunch of these. Yep. Put them back in the system. Now, proven frame is the same thing with four sticks around it. I should have a bunch of four sticks. Let's make those. There we go. Plenty of extras. So they get three of those, and in they go. They snuggle up close, and they start working. Excellent. These are all good. Oh, these can use new ones. And here can use new ones. There. Right. And I'll put my extra oblivion frame over here. So I have lots of species. So any new bees I decide to make, if it takes one of these species as part of its um, chain of development, I can jump right in with these. And I've got a bunch of the beneficial serums. And a bunch of those bees. I've got others here in case, just in case. Most of these I won't need. And uh, some extra ones here. Okay, so, in a while, we should be able to come back and see uh, irradiated combs. They're basically green honeycombs. Put those in a centrifuge, and you get uranium. And I'm looking forward to that. Now, uh, production won't ever be really fast until I can both improve that slower productivity and build myself an apiary and I think they will be the first well no they'll be the second first I'll put the industrious in the apiary and really get the uh, pollen churning out so I can make more apiaries uh, the second apiary will be for the radioactive bees but I think the apiaries will be at the new base site which I had one sort of picked out uh, 
I can show it to you here real quick before we end this one. This I know this one's gotten rather over long, but uh, let me show you my idea and maybe you can let me know in the comments what you think. I've got a portal gun here. The bacon one should take me there. And switch this to the quagmire. There we go. So I click it. And it's not working. Did I set it to the other color? It's not working at all. Oh, because it's not chunk loaded. <laughs> I forgot to put a chunk loader out there. So of course it's not going to work. All right, well, maybe next time. Yeah, the quagmire is a very barren place. Uh, it looks like there's been a lot of pollution. So I was thinking, run with that and make a factory that looks like it's spilling out pollution. Get some smokers from the Twilight Forest and flamers and have oil coming out of pipes in the side. And, but then inside have it, uh, you know, a little garden with the last truffula tree and that sort of thing, you know. Might do that. Sounds sort of fun. I don't usually decorate my bases that much, but last time I, as you saw in the episode zero, I did a little bit. And uh, I, don't know, I might use this bone flooring, because I still do like it. It's nice and sunny. All right, well, that's it for now. It's been a long episode, and hopefully it's been interesting, even though a little bit of bees. I didn't want to show you a ton of it, because I know it can get boring, even if you're doing it. But uh, in this case, ooh, the rewards are definitely going to be worth it. Have anything? Not yet. Too early. All right, well, thanks for watching. This is Nonsanity, signing out. How about now? No. Oh, I'll stare at it until they produce their honeycombs. Staring. 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 Staring.